Hey guys, welcome to Priceless B Movies. I'm your host, Colin Price. Returning after about a month, month and a half or so hiatus that I took from doing these reviews, just because for various reasons I just didn't have the time, and just it was just getting to be a headache doing this, plus doing several other things that I had to do relating to my work and the holidays and blah blah. blah. Now all that crap is done, and I'm back, big as life and twice as ugly. Now that I've got that hopefully obscure 90s reference out of the way, let's get started right away with a uh, newer film. This is not an older film like I usually tend to do, but this is a newer film that's only, to the best of my knowledge, been out for the last few months. Last Shift. Last Shift stars Juliana Harkavy, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, as a rookie cop whose first night on the job is actually kind of an interesting night because this isn't something you would think that they would assign a rookie cop to but basically she has to stay the night in this transitioning police station it's the last night that the station's going to be open and there's some uh, biohazardous stuff in the armory of the station and there's some hazmat guys coming to collect but someone needs to basically hang out the night in this police station and wouldn't you know it it happens to be haunted Seems that a year or so uh, before the beginning of this film, there was this kind of Manson family cult that were arrested and brought into this prison, and they all killed themselves while they were in there, and now their ghosts supposedly haunt the uh, police station. Gotta hand it to the movie. This is a very creepy movie. Um, I, I saw the trailer for this uh, a few months back, and I was kind of like, eh, it could go either way. This could be really good, or it could just be kind of your standard just, you know, jump movie where every 30 seconds someone goes boo. And I was really afraid of that, but my fears were pretty quickly laid to rest when I saw this film and found that for the entirety of the almost 90-minute runtime, I was pretty on edge. There were a couple of scenes in this movie that had the hair on the back of my neck standing up. And that's not easy to do. I watch horror movies all the time, so I really do have to give props to this movie for being legitimately scary despite a very limited budget and despite uh, more than a couple lapses in logic. Hats off to Juliana Harkavy, who, as I said, plays the main character, this rookie cop. Uh, basically because she's by herself for a good deal of the movie, um, a lot of the suspense relies on her expressions, her delivery as an actress, and she carries this movie really well. I hope to see her in more projects. Also stand out is Joshua Michael, who plays uh, the leader of these ghosts, kind of a, he'd be, basically be the Charles Manson figure if this was the Manson family. He only has a couple of scenes uh, out of makeup, but you know his scenes in the film are pretty chilling. This guy had a creep factor of like, oh, one out of ten, we'd go to about 73. As I said, one of the things I really love about this movie is that uh, it was a very low budget film, but it never feels like a low budget movie. You know what I mean? Like, you know, there's sometimes you watch a low budget movie and you can tell the camera equipment was pretty shoddy. It looked like someone filmed something on their webcam. Or, like, it tries to use, like, a lot of CG digital effects, but because there was next to no money, it just looks really cheap, like it belongs in, like, an episode of Are You Afraid of the Dark? Like, the, the effects are just so bad that you can't buy into them to save your life. None of that happens in Last Shift. The effects, at least that I noticed, were mostly practical and very well done. I was very impressed with what the filmmakers were able to do with the limited budget that they had. You know, looking back, um... Other than the fact that the ending is a little too ambiguous for my taste, like, I love the ending to this. I really do. There's this great slow burn feel to this movie, and the last 10 or 15 minutes really do get your attention, and it wraps up in this not-so-neat little package. Maybe if I saw the movie a couple of more times, I would get it. There are some characters that uh, this rookie cop interacts with, and a couple of them, it's made pretty clear that they're spirits, that they're ghosts, they're phantoms. But then a couple of them, you're, you're not really sure. And maybe I do have to watch it once or twice more to kind of catch on to which characters are real, which characters aren't. But that all kind of ties into an ending where I'm not quite sure exactly what happened. It, it, it does seem like it's meant to be open to interpretation, which is cool, but that's definitely something that I want to watch the movie again for. Only real issue that I have with this movie and it's a big issue, especially in horror movies. And I'm not normally this guy, but uh, I do have to say that uh, my biggest problem with this movie is the logic. This, this girl in this movie is not very bright. And to, as if to illustrate my point, about 
26, 27 minutes into the movie, uh, a ghost tricks her and locks her in one of the holding cells of this prison. And then just a few seconds after that, this bullshit happens. pretty fucking freaky, right? Now, what bothers me is that after this happens, does she run? Does she head out the door like, hell, there's ghosts and shit in there. I ain't going back in there. And, you know, does she make a run for it? Absolutely not. You know what she does right afterwards? She goes back to her desk, sits down like nothing ever happened. Now, there's a chance that she would, basically, that she didn't see these guys behind her and that she didn't know they were there. But because she was just locked in this room, she has to know there's someone else in the police station with her. She doesn't have her gun, you know, and is searching the halls for, you know, an intruder. She just goes back to work as if nothing happened. Sorry, but I cannot get past that level of stupid, and this movie does have that level of stupid a couple of times. None of that changes the fact, though, that for a good deal of it, this is a seriously scary movie, and I do recommend you check it out. I'll go ahead and give Last Shift three stars. So that's my review of Last Shift. Stay tuned, i got a lot more reviews coming, especially now that I'm back doing these a little more regularly. Also, and as always, if there's a movie that you can think of that is either uh, overwritten or underappreciated by mainstream audiences or critics or both, and you'd like to know what I think about it, please let me know in the comments section below, and I'll see what I can do about finding a copy of that movie and putting up a review for you. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned for more Priceless B-Movies.